Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to another edition of The Slave Master, The Slave Hunter and The Slave Path 6. And our very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. Please look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications or sources referenced and study them yourself. Remember, for myself, I wish nothing, but you will reward me beyond measure if you check that disgraceful traffic by which the Portuguese carried the Negroes of Africa into slavery. David Livingstone and this was in 1864 to the Queen of England and to the Queen's counselors on his return from Africa in 1864 and from Sir Charles William James Orr in the east of the protectorate 400 miles up the river Benue matters had reached a crisis during the summer of 1901 it may be remembered that a Fulani chief owing allegiance to the Sultan of Sokoto ruled over a pagan country with his capital at a town named Yola, which had first been visited by Traveller Bath in the 50s. This large and populous district was virtually a slave reserve and every year enormous numbers of pagans were enslaved and sent northwards in large caravans. And so you see for those who keep claiming that it could have been the arrow. The arrow did not have the capacity and that is why you have not seen and cannot see anywhere before the 1950s where it is recorded that the arrow were behind the slave trade. And so to YouTube censorship on our channel, you may have noticed that our video production has dropped in both numbers and even quality as well as frequency and this is related to the censorship of YouTube on our channel. You also may have noticed that we are unable to reply to comments made on some videos, on many videos actually. So ideally, when we make comments, they don't appear because YouTube's algorithms are preventing them from showing up. So those are the reasons we are not making as much videos as we used to and we do not waste too much time on our researches because if we put them out exactly the way we get them, YouTube will certainly remove them because like we told you, believe it or not, the slave master and his slave hunting partners are still working together. So they are still very much afraid of the truth. And so in the face of heavy censorship by YouTube on our contents, our videos and our comments, which has slowed us down tremendously, we suggest looking for the materials referenced and studying them yourself. This is not an entertainment channel. And our goal is to get the Negroes to know what the slave masters and their slave hunting partners know and are doing to sustain the slave trade. And to further understand how exactly the slave master and his slave hunting partners are working together today against the Negroes, we stumbled across something from Google who incidentally are the parent company or owners of YouTube and that thing says our commitments to racial equity. Over the past several weeks, violent and racist attacks against the black community have forced the world to reckon with the structural and systematic racism that black people have experienced over generations. My own search for answers started within our own worlds, listening to the personal accounts of members of our black leadership advisory group and our black googlers has only reinforced for me the reality our black communities face. One, where systematic racism permeates every aspect of life, from interactions with law enforcement to access to housing and capital, to healthcare, education and the workplace. As a company and as individuals who came here to build helpful products for everyone, Google commits to translating the energy of this moment into lasting, meaningful change. Today, we are announcing a set of concrete commitments to move that work forward. Internally, to build sustainable equity for Google's black community 
and externally to make our products and programs helpful in the moments that matter most to black users. Sunday Pichai, Google and Alphabet CEO, June 17, 2020. Our interest is not just this note because we know he is looking at the United States alone. Our interest is to ask you, things like Biafra and Ambazonia, when you post about them in Facebook and Twitter and all of them are usually against them and taking sides with the establishment, with the Fulanese, with their slave hunting partners. Why don't you sit back and ask yourself what informs their opinion against things like Biafra and Ambazonia against the search for freedom by these groups. Remember, the so-called Negroes, the so-called blacks in America today, we are stolen from that region. So the question becomes, why are they interested in blacks in America, but not interested in blacks in Brazil, not interested in blacks in Biafra or Ambazonia, or even Jamaica or elsewhere? Why? That should be your question. Remember, this Biafra we are talking about during the war of 1967 to 70, the UN avoided talking about it, even to the point that a young man, Bruce Merrock, set himself on fire in New York. The UN didn't talk about it just to call for a ceasefire. They never did. So that's the same thing they are trying to do now. When we get where we will host our videos, we will show you the relationship between the slave master and his slave hunting partners and how they use their slave hunting partners against the Negroes till tomorrow morning. It hasn't changed. We saw how they used it during the COVID-19 lockdown. Remember, we asked you a question. The same army that was killing people for seeking for freedom couldn't have been the same forcing them to stay home so that they don't get killed by a virus. And even if you think that army wished them well, that army hoped that they lived, why would the same army be killing them? And today in Nigeria, the Nigerian police massacred innocent civilians just for gathering because they were seeking for freedom from the oppressive Nigerian state, which was a product of the slave trade. Remember, colonialism was just corporate slave trade. And we shall examine that in a subsequent video. But our interest is to ask you if the Negroes were free, as you might be thinking, why do you think the slave masters, be it VOA, Al Jazeera, CNN, BBC, and all the slave masters media, why do they all keep quiet as the so-called Nigerian state, which was a product of the slave trade? And this includes Cameroon and all the other countries in that sub-region. Massacre innocent civilians and everybody pretends not to see. Now, tomorrow, they are going to tell you it's Africans that sold or killed other Africans. But it is deeper than that. And that's exactly why we're taking time to show you what you need to read about the slave trade. It is still going on, but subliminally. Remember, when the slave trade stopped in that format due to the agitations, due to the pressure, due to people becoming aware of how the slaves were being obtained. Remember, they told their people that the Negroes were not human and that they had no languages, they were naked, they lived on trees, they were just like cattle. So they captured them and conditioned them to be like humans. That's their story at that time. You need to bear this in mind. But when people started seeing that the Negroes were actually human and that the stories they were being told about who they were was a lie, that was when they started stopping it. England was a brutal slave hunting country, including Portugal, including Spain, France, Germany, all those countries were slave trading countries. Don't be deceived by their hypocrisy today. And we encourage you to sit back and look at all the places Obama visited as memorials of the slave trade and ask yourself why he did not visit the Bight of Biafra and Bight of Benin, which were the major slave ports at that time. The forts in places like Gori, Bonche Island and Elmina were just barracoons. That's where they held the slaves after capture. They were not the source of the slaves. Ghana you see today was never ancient Ghana. It's just the Gold Coast, a portion of territory that the slave master and his foot soldiers renamed to Ghana in the 1950s. So don't be deceived by those nomenclatures. Take time and look at what they are doing. The slave master is a subtle beast, but he is never smart. And so we encourage you to find time to study some of the materials we present here 
and things like the miseducation of the negro by katha g woodson study them yourself at least you'll be able to compare what you are told especially if you're a so-called african-american with what the negroes are being fed with in a place like nigeria in cameroon in ambazonia and in biafra so that when you hear them claiming to be one nigeria or one cameroon you understand that those are the slave masters food soldiers we will explain to you when we look at why they are fighting or why they are killing the negroes like we told you they are slave hunting partners they lack humanity they lack common sense that's actually why the slave master uses them against the negroes so if you look at people like the sultan of the fulani those are the weapons in the hands of the slave masters and that was the wholesale merchant in negro slaves so symbolically they are aliens to that region they came from elsewhere conquered it and occupied it they are the only one that are conquest minded so you can't actually live with them they are only interested in subjugation and slavery of the negroes they are interested in capturing and stealing people's lands. The slave master understands this and it is through them that he steals the resources in those areas. So when you look at it, you're going to say Africans are so dumb and stupid. They have the resources, they can't use it. You won't know that it is the slave hunting partners that are used to prevent any form of development in those areas. Why not sit back and ask yourself which type of human being will his brother or sister be dying in the desert or drowning in the ocean in search of food? And he can't even issue a statement about it. He can't do anything about it. He will pretend not to see. That should tell you who they are. They lack humanity. They lack common sense. They are working with the slave master. And we can tell you exactly where they are going to. From the COVID lockdown to whatever they plan to do in the next few years. So that you can see them happen. Like we have studied them to a T. We read their historical records. We read their actions and what they did when the abolitionists and the Quakers were fighting against the slave trade. So it is exactly what they are doing today. So it is very easy to predict them if you can study the historical records. And so we ask you again, does the killing of Biafrans and Ambazonians today not prove to you that there is no way the Negroes can be the same as the slave hunters? The Nigerian armed forces, mainly the army, was a Fulani, which was an Arab group at that time an islamic slave hunting militia rebaptized the nigerian army in 1863 do you still have any doubt about that we shall use the slave hunters christianity and islam to prove to you that the slave master and his slave hunting partners are still working together today against the negroes and remember as we already mentioned in the previous videos that what you have is nothing scriptural they took the negro way of life added a lot of lies and then presented it as if it was the word of anybody the slave master and his slave hunting partners wrote those books and they know the history of those books and if you remember the breaking of the tablets of stone of the law by the biblical moses that's the code that shows them that they have to break the law that is why in nigeria for example the law will say you can't kill anybody but the fool and he can kill people as many as they want and nobody goes to arrest them they have to be breaking the law that's what the code says so while the negro is looking at the law the fulani can break the law and nothing happens to him the slave master can break the law be it in the u.s or anywhere and nothing happens to him they do not follow that law that's one thing we are bold to state to you the breaking of the law by moses in the bible is simply a code that tells them to break the law so they understand breaking the law they don't keep those laws if you doubt us Go and explain to us why there are no Fulanese in jail for killing people, sacking communities, occupying their lands, and everybody keeps quiet. The VOA, BBC, Al Jazeera, and all those slave masters media, they do not report them. Why? Why do you also think that the same army that claims to be protecting the territorial integrity of Nigeria, whatever that term means, does not attack Fulani herdsmen, but we go all the way to Biafra land and attack people like Kano, an unarmed civilian, in his sleep over Biafra or Ambazonia agitation. This is the same thing they are doing in Cameroon. Our question to you is, why do you think the army, I suppose the army that goes to war to fight other nations and conquer nations for its own country does not fight Fulani herdsmen, but it will fight a Negro that is a civilian if he talks about freedom. It is still the same slave trade. They repackaged it and we will prove it to you. If you also read the historical records, you will see that that's what they are doing. They lack humanity, they lack common sense, and there is no better way to say it, we are sorry. The Slave Master and the Slave Hunter 
Remember that the slave trade did not happen all over what is Africa today. Remember that. And that it was exclusive to Negroes who were pagans. Because if a Negro became Mohammedan at that time, that became a Muslim, he was no longer eligible for capture. So you need to understand that it was religious and at the same time racially exclusive to Negroes. And that the Negroes were not known as Africans when the slave trade started circa 1434. And also, the slave hunters and slave masters controlled the narrative as to how the slave trade could have been Africans sold other Africans or how Negroes could have sold themselves. Now, permit us to ask you, if you were supposedly a Negro at that time, can you tell us why the next man can be sold and your own family is not sold? Just explain to us how somebody could have been sold and they get 400, 500 men, women and children in a slave ship. Remember, in the objection to stopping the slave trade, they claimed that those that were being sold were criminals, which you will see some so-called intellectuals today believe. Our question to you is, when did people that were less than 10, 8, 15 or let's say minors start committing crimes? that merit or warrant them to being sold to unknown places along with their mothers. So remember, these are how the slave master came with all the lines, including things like Mary Celeste and how she came to stop the killing of twins and all those lies concocted by the slave master and his slave hunting partners. So you need to ask yourself that question. No matter what they tell you, always remember that it's impossible to have sold a man with his wife and his kids without some form of force. And you may have also noticed how the slave master and his slave hunting partners exonerated themselves from the atrocities. You notice how they succeeded in blaming it on the Negroes. The only reason they succeeded is because of their slave hunting partners. If you notice in the media, for example, the police killed innocent people in a meeting because they were seeking for freedom. The Nigerian army, which was a slave hunting militia, issued a statement claiming that they are now outlawed, they are now terrorists. Now tell us who gave the army that right, if not that code to break the law. Because they are supposed in a democracy, the army had no authority under the law to make such a pronouncement, if not because it was a slave hunting militia and conditioned along those lines that anyone asking for freedom is actually going against what the army was created for. We ask you again, how can an army, imagine the US army today, jumping out and making an announcement that any group, let's say NWACP, is now a terrorist group. Imagine that, that's exactly what they do there. Because the slave masters hide behind their slave hunting partners and engineer them and use them against the Negroes. You may not understand this if you don't understand the history. And so, do you then remember our videos on the enemies within and how they operate? Do you also remember our video on Fulanese, Fubi, Felata, Fula, Pulo, etc. as the enemies within? And how the slave masters media, feudalism, academics, conditioning are used to misinform, miseducate and deceive the Negroes? Do you also remember the slave masters Oxford University conditioning based on the politics of researching and writing on Africa? Remember, the slave master establishes a university where you can come and study your history. But the ones in your place are not supposedly up to standard. It is the one he will tell you in his own school based on his own curriculum. And you remember when we looked at that to ask you what do you think that means? You go to a university in Oxford. And the part of what they teach you in your research methodologies is the politics of researching and writing on Africa. That is exactly where the code is also hidden. So even if you went to that school, you will come back just conditioned in defense of Massa and not that you could have learned anything sensible. And do you also remember that the armies in the sub-region were the slave hunters? You may have wondered why the army would be killing in a place like Nigeria and all the governments and all the so-called humanitarian organizations will keep quiet, even those that claim to be Pan-Africans and all those kind of garbage. And you wonder why the same people could have been killing themselves. But the simple reason is that the slave master ensures that his slave hunting partners are in power in those countries. They know how to look the other way as innocent people are being massacred. Why not ask yourself why somebody whose siblings are drowning in the ocean or dying in the desert cannot seek for a solution? 
he would rather pretend not to see. The same way the so-called Nigerian army, which was a Fulani and Islamic slave hunting militia, renamed Nigerian army, will go and invade and massacre innocent civilians and everybody pretends not to see. Now, don't blame those physically here in Nigeria because they can't speak up. If they spoke up, they are going to be killed. That's the truth of it and the slave master will pretend not to see. But those that defend the army, those that speak in defense of the army, the slave master's media that pretends not to see what is going on, people like the BBC misinforming the world since 1922, those are the ones to be blamed. And those are the reasons you should ask yourself, why do they not report on those killings? Why will YouTube, for example, or Facebook be against Biafra and Ambazonia? Those are questions you have to ask. Now, it might be very easy to remember that it is those oil companies operating in those regions that are behind all the problems because they have to go to their slave hunting partners and ask them to kill those that are against their operations. And you have to remember that those oil companies came from the slave trading companies back in the days. If you doubt what we're saying, conduct your research. If you check all the oil companies, all the multinationals there, they all came from the slave trading companies. They just remodeled them. And if you are doubting what is going on now, the slave master knows that oil is coming to an end. So he needs to rejig the system so as to use his slave hunting partners also against the Negroes. That's all that is happening. We shall look at it in a subsequent video. But then, do you however wonder how the slave master and the slave hunters condition the slave hunters to start catching the Negroes for them? Remember, if let's say somebody in the army goes to kill another person, the world tends to blame the leader in power, forgetting that if we based whatever thing we're saying on the laws they claim was given to us by God, whoever did the shooting is responsible for the killing. For example, somebody who is in the army and goes to kill another person, there is no way he will get to heaven if we assumed that the slave master's claim of how heaven existed anywhere else is true. And then that army gets to heaven and his excuse to the creator is that so so and so was in power and asks him to kill the person. That doesn't make sense. So you see that you are also responsible for your actions. But then we have to find out how they do it. The trick they play. Remember the police that went to shoot innocent people in southeastern Nigeria or the Shites in Kaduna are not the same people in power. So ideally the slave hunters sit up there and they condition some very big fools to do the dirty job for them. We saw how they positioned the likes of Gowon in the 60s and used him as the image of the massacre of his uh, siblings. But unfortunately, because he was in the army, he's not going to have shame or anything called humanity. That's who they are. You will see Obasanjo, who was the successor to Black Scorpion who gave an interview that they plan to starve every so-called Igbo person so that they can starve to death. They removed him and replaced him with Obasanjo. And we remember at that time was when the likes of Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X were also fighting for civil rights in the United States, for example. So you see how foolish those people in the army and the police are. They lack humanity, they lack common sense. But then there is a way the slave master does it. He does it through conditioning. So have you also taken time to research the Nigerian army, especially to see it clearly for what it is, the slave hunters dressed on borrowed robes? And so could you try to research who ensured that Negroes who left the plantation got hung, amputated or killed? Remember when they talk about slave trade, you may just be seeing it as purely an intellectual concept, but it's deeper than that. Remember at that time, if a negro left the plantation, he gets either killed, amputated or jailed or flogged or things like that or hung publicly. Have you wondered who enforces those laws? Remember it is the police and the army. So all they did was to condition those people you see you call Nigerian army or police today along those same lines. And so we encourage you as well to research point of sale of slaves and find out how you have been deceived by the slave masters who told you it was Africans that sold other Africans. And please research how a negro supposedly naked at that time, how they could have been spoken to that made him 
bring his brothers and sisters, wives and daughters in exchange for toys and garbage. Remember, at this time, it will be very easy for us to see who could have been behind it, especially by looking at their activities today and how they exchange resources for colored paper and weapons and then use those weapons to massacre the Negroes. And so, please watch the video of Malcolm X and why he was against Martin Luther King's non-violent stance and compare it with the Nigerian army which is the real terror group declaring people terrorists just because they sought for freedom. You need to look at that scenario very well and ask yourself what is in somebody agitating for freedom? Just to find out what could that mean? How could that have made an army of a whole nation? If there was nothing behind it to wake up and make an announcement unashamedly, these are supposedly people's parents. So those people in the army like John and Enche, and you notice that each time they position a Negro or a Hamitic group that is not Fulani to make some pronouncements, it is just the same way they did with Gowon. They are coming with a lie. They know that those are shameful, but they have to use a fool, somebody conditioned to do that for them. You don't need to believe us. You just need to read their footsteps read the historical records so you understand what is going on so please listen to newly recruited cadets of the nigerian slave hunting militia called nigerian army to see how they were conditioned to become slave hunters this will give you a little idea of what they go through in the training and what they are told remember it is like a computer whatever they impute contributes to the output and the slave master already believes that the negroes are just not human so you choose what you got to input into them to get what you want. So if you want to use them as beasts of burden, you just have to condition them to be that. So the same way these so-called Nigerian army cadets have been conditioned to become something like slave hunters. So this will explain to you why they can be sent to go and kill innocent people and they go do that. And before you do, let us reference Cardinal Lavigiri and the African slave trade edited by Richard F. Clark and this was published 1889 and here we are told that a slave dealer, he relates, was once asked how he penetrated into the heart of Africa and who was the ruler of those remote regions. I will tell you the name of the monarch of Central Africa, he replied, laying his hand on the weapon he carried. It is King Rifle. This answer is true enough. We are a law to be passed prohibiting the Arabs and those merciless maruders, the Metis, from carrying firearms and purchasing ammunition and where every infraction of this regulation made punishable by banishment, it would in a short time have the effect the cardinal asserts of ridding those provinces of Africa of which Europeans have obtained possession on the three or four hundred their numbers do not exceed this figure, human fiends who carry off or destroy millions of helpless victims in concert with the native chiefs to whom they have taught the creed of Islam and the art of slave hunting. So you see that one, it was King Rifle that made it possible for him to get there. So anybody that is telling you of how Africans could have sold other Africans, just sit back and ask yourself. How a man could just be sold and he'll be standing there. That narrative alone makes the Negro subhuman. Remember, it means a man will just come out and you say, I've sold you. He stands there. The man takes him and goes to sell him and he continues to go. You need to bear that in mind. This is a lie the slave master and his slave hunting partners have used to misinform and deceive the Negroes for a very long time. But no lie lives forever. What do you have to say? So what do you advise? I advise to be Okay, I love that, I love that. Uh -huh, that's good. I love that. civilians. They are very useless. Okay. Okay. So ma, what's your advice? My advice to them is they let them go to the